Cool. All right. Quick vote. Yeah, me too. Okay. Me so, too. All right, great. So you understand that what this exercise is, you can do as much or as little of it as you want. And it's just a way for you to test your colors. So the, um, the lights, mids, darks, um, I quickly just threw on some colors. And again, my yellow is too light. If I squint my eyes, it's lighter than that color. So I'd have to neutralize or whatever darken that slightly. This purple is too dark. So I would have to lighten that slightly. The blue seems close. And this other little dash of purple seem pretty close to the values I want. Um, I can also test it on here. And within these, I can also do uh, tests. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff. I will go ahead and rip it off the painting. You can see the painting hiding sheepishly behind it. Um, and uh, we will get to work on that painting. So hold on to your hats. Here we go. Zoom out so we can see our colors. Lower this down. There we go, that's a nice angle. Try not to kick the tripod. Um, so anyways, yeah, as I'm just kind of mixing colors and testing, it's just a great way to do it. Um, another exercise that's similar that I did in Amy Erickson's class was the same thing, but you know, she had us doing, I think three or four values. I went ahead and did more, um, no, like this. So light to dark. And then as I mixed a color, I would just try to figure out where that color is. You know, I would just mix like this, pretend I just mixed this color. I would try to figure out where does it lie on uh, according to the value across. And then I would try to make it get darker and keeping to the value on the left side. Uh, it's a tough exercise, a lot of fun, um, kind of beautiful. I should finish these squares so I can hang it up and show it off because I think it is really quite beautiful. Um, we weren't too worried about, you know, going warmer or cooler with the colors. I was just, you know, some of them get warmer as they get darker. Some of them get, you know, cooler as they get darker. Um, and again, squinting our eyes, kind of seeing, do the values go down and get darker? Do they get darker? And then seeing, oh, you know what? This color, it feels a little bit off value-wise. And it, um, there's actually a video of Amy doing it on YouTube. So if you just type in Amy Erickson, uh, probably color chart on YouTube. And Amy is A-I-M-E-E. -E. A little demo of her doing it. Um, I didn't want to completely steal her awesome little exercise. So um, I was just kind of thinking, well, here's another opportunity, another option to do something similar. So yeah, maybe we will revisit this. Maybe this will be something I'll keep laying around for class and I can um, use it to reference back to. So very much tape on it. But yeah, that nice blue tape. You can see my nice edges that I can have. It's not even fully dry anyway, so it probably wouldn't be a great idea to put too much oil paint on there. Um, but yeah, it'll be a lot of fun to go through and uh, I have now this nice surf. Oh. Yep, too wet. I just pulled off a bunch of paint. So I'll wait for that to dry more before I take off the rest of that tape. Um, but here we are. Here's my crazy mess from last week. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and raise this up a little bit so it's closer to the colors. So they're both in the scene when I zoom in. Sturdy. And there's the middle of our thing. 
when painting, you guys, um, just for longevity of your shoulders. I don't want to paint this much. When your shoulders and your joints. Oops, your little. Um, I try to keep it at approximately straight out from the shoulder is about the middle of my painting. Um, I find that that helps me. I do have uh, other people I paint with. Anton paints with the uh, canvas slightly lower than that level for some reason. I mean, everybody kind of find your comfort, kind of find a point where you can paint for longer periods without your shoulder uh, going out on you. Um, especially if you're becoming an, a conductor, right, Michelle? Yep, or a magician. Or a magician. Oh, yeah, with our nice magic wand. Yeah, I like that. Magician. Um, I didn't find out. I didn't check back on you guys on the uh, little uh, practices that I gave you, little uh, homeworks, individual homeworks for some of you. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just pull these off. And I have a very vibrant, crazy underpainting. It is bone dry. Um, bear with me, the sound is horrible, but what I can do sometimes too, is if I've got a painting with a lot of, uh, a lot of texture to it that I don't want, you know, all that texture, I don't mind some. In fact, it can be really beautiful and useful sometimes. I just take in, and that's just gonna knock off the little, uh, the bumps and the ridges a little bit. There we go. Beautiful sound. Um, so I've got my value structure. I've got my design. Um, I'm not too unhappy with anything. If I were, like if I went, you know what, I need to raise or lower or expand or contract, make bigger, make smaller, any of those things, I would do it now. I would redo it by probably establishing my darks. Again, my darks generally, as a general rule, are giving me my structure on which I want to build. Um, in today's class, though, it's about finding that color in our shadows, which we're going to do. I'm going to come back in and get into those color families. Um, one thing I don't like is this is very much um, not what I want down here. I want it to be much lighter down low. So I'll be covering all that cloud up. Um, I also don't like the shapes I built here. So I'm going to be basically, I plan to cover every square inch of this. Um, and I have 50 minutes to do it. So let's get to work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start in the sky, which isn't really, really typical of me. And I'm going to leave um, enough paint so that when I get into my uh, trees and things, I'll be able to come back in and uh, carve out more big shapes. The reason I want to jump to my sky at this point, which again, a lot of artists will do their sky kind of last, which is understandable. And there's reasons that that works. But I'm going to do it because the sky is creating the warmth, the light source is creating the colors that are gonna be in the light family. And conversely, some of these cools that are away from my light source are gonna be uh, radiating back in and bouncing in and giving my shadows some of their cool colors. Just like we saw in some of the paintings we just looked at. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start in my sky and I'm just gonna kind of make it up. I don't actually like the clouds very much that in my reference photo. Um, I, that was one of my big things I kind of noticed after we were finishing up is I didn't really enjoy those. So I'm just going to make some colors that are pleasing to me. I'm going to go ahead and go to my peach color, which I love. Quinacridone. Quinacridone red is the only red I have on my palette today. Um, and then my Indian yellow, I mix with that and some white and you get a nice, nice kind of a salmon color over here. I can probably move this a little bit more. Um, and I'm just kind of thinking, you know what, that's a nice, kind of a nice big color. Um, I'm going to 
mix with my palette knife so I don't, so I make bigger piles. Let's make a reddish color that relates to that. So it's a lot more of the quinacridone. And then I remember just being in love with this color, right? So let's go ahead and see if I can't recreate some of that magic, a little bit of my manganese, quite a bit of my quinacridone and a big splash of white. Right, so instantly I gotta go, it's a little cooler than up here, but it's very nice color, isn't it? Mm. Kind of a, uh, kind of a nice flower color. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that because I do like that color. I think I will use that and let's grab some of that and add more blue. Make it a little more shadowy color, more into the darker portions of my clouds. I'm gonna clean my palette knife. Grab a little bit over here, and I'm gonna see what I can do to kind of make it a little more exciting. Add a little white, a little more red. Add even a little more red and a little more white. All right, I'm kind of liking where I'm going. I'm gonna take some of this. I'm going to want it even brighter in parts of it. Add more yellow to it, more white to it. I like it. Add more white, more yellow. Ooh, not that much. Burn through my paper towels as I Keep cleaning off my palette knife here, but that's all right, because I want some vibrant, clean colors. Beautiful. I'm going to warm that up a little bit because it's going to be the source of my warm light. Great. <laughs> How's this for rushing through it? And I'm going to want some cool purples as well. So I'm going to add a little bit more. I took my manganese, my French ultramarine. I'm going to grab some of my quinacridone and a little bit of white because I know I don't want it that dark. I'm also going to want to gray this purple down. I don't want it to be so vibrant that it's competing with these beautiful pinks and peach colors that I have. So I'm going to gray that down. How should I gray this purple down, Diane? Or uh, Debbie, sorry. Deborah, Debbie. Or anybody. I'm sorry, yellows, huh? You knew. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, put it into my purple, and neutralize that down a little bit. Just getting it to go towards the gray a little bit, just so that it doesn't detract. It's getting really quite dark. I don't know if I will ever need that level of dark up there. So I'll probably just add a little bit of white to it already. Oh yeah, nice and gray. I'm gonna take a little bit of that and mix it into here too so that my colors get gray, grayed down pretty quick in my clouds. Look at that, not a bad uh, little color. Um, you see how having a limited palette allows me to get to colors pretty quickly. We also have a little bit of blue in there. We decided the blue that I put on there last time was a bit extreme and I went back and wiped it down quite a bit. Um, so let's make kind of a, a, a bluey, greeny gray, shall we? All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit of my French ultramarine, a bit more of my manganese, a touch of yellow, and white, let's see what happens. Right, so my French ultramarine has a little bit of red in it. And uh, so that's automatically gonna kind of make a more of a neutral uh, greenish color. 
Um, it's not bad, but it's still really vibrant. I can see both the kind of sky area and this there. Um, I'm just going to lighten it with more white. I just want it to kind of be a counterbalance against like up near the shadow colors of the, of the clouds and kind of near the tops of the clouds. Um, I love that color. A little bit of it peeking through. Yeah, see how it just kind of neutralized down. It's kind of a, it's a nice grayish blue green, right? Let's, let's remix that color but let's let it be rich just so you can see the comparison. I'm gonna mix a little white so we can begin to see it. Right, so it can be a very rich color if I want it. And maybe I'll be able to bring some of that into the shadows. Who knows? That might be kind of cool. Probably too vibrant. It'll probably, you know, if I took and put that over here into the shadows now, right? It just kind of screams out at us um, of, I don't belong. I'm in the wrong family. <laughs> if you wanted to gray that down or either of those green blues, would you add a little of that peachy color that you have? Let's do an experiment. I bet you're right, though. Let's do it with the extreme one first. I bet you're totally right. Uh, look at him just lay down and behave himself. Nice. Let's do that same thing up here. Ah, uh, who's a good blue gray? You are. Just chills right out. Can't really see it over there, but isn't that nice? I mean, it's a beautiful color. And imagine, imagine, imagine if we pulled the Ovanus Barbarian trick and we load it up part of our brush with that, part of our brush with that, and then dipped it into here. Let's see what happens as I drag this brush across. So it's going to start off in my prediction, in my prediction. I'm a scientist, right? I've got to have my uh, prediction first. Uh, is that the right word? Hypothesis? Um, yes, hypothesis. My hypothesis is that it's going to go from peach to, uh, let me get a little more of it on there. Is that peach to uh, blue and green? So dragging across. So optical mixing within. Isn't that awesome? I, I definitely didn't load enough paint on the brush, but I just love how the pink starts really bright and then very quickly it dies off as my brush drags. So you might want to do some of that too. Let's, you know, experimenting with loading, loading your brush. You can also do, you know, So I put the purple on top up here and then on the bottom down here. Um, again, I would need much more paint, but you can really see, can you guys see the striations within that brush stroke? That's as far as it's gonna zoom in, I'm afraid. Um, but uh, have fun experimenting. Maybe I can do some of that in these clouds. Let's imagine, let's imagine I wanted to do the bottom portion of a cloud really quick. So I've got my, underpainting here and you know in one brush stroke you could load two colors i like it yeah so experiment with that like i said you can just do one half and one another and another another way to do it um maybe even simpler let's take these two colors that i'm not using and let's add a little more of this color. And 
and I'm just going to give them a little swirl, but I'm not going to mix them. Grab a new brush. I'm going to load that up. So they're in a swirl. I didn't mix them all the way. Anton does this a lot. And you just get these little striations. There's some darker blue in there. It's a cooler blue up the outside. It goes towards a greener blue. I'm a, I apologize, it's not very obvious on there, especially against the gray background. But experiment, please, uh, with loading your brush in different ways. Again, this week, let's be Monet. Let's use some darn paint. Paint like you're rich. Most expensive paint you use, or the most expensive paint you own is the paint you don't use if you have a hard time squeezing out paint. So let's squeeze out some paint and let's use some paint. Here we go, ready or not. Very bright, hard to see. There's actually color separations going on in there. Let me turn off my spotlight. I've got a secondary light and it may not be necessary. So yeah, I'm just going to try to get my sky covered fairly quickly. I've got all those beautiful colors that we just worked on and made, and I'm just kind of figuring out where do they belong, where do they play nicely, really lightening up some of those darks in my sky, um, mostly because at the end of class, I want you to all go, you know what, I liked it better at the beginning. Um, that's always the risk, but you know, gotta be willing to kill our babies, which is the worst quote, but it's an interesting one that stuck with me. Um, I've told this story before again, but since I'm painting, I'll just tell it quickly. Is in uh, when I first got into art school, I studied, I studied and graduated with um, a grad illustration degree. And I had uh, my first year illustration teacher was a beautiful, wonderful, warm, caring woman named Elsa Warnick. Great watercolor illustrator. She's done some beautiful, beautiful uh, baby books and uh, very little young kids um, <clears throat> illustrations. And uh, she was just so lovely and so sweet. And uh, you know, you'd be working on your painting for a couple hours, your illustration, and she'd come around and be like, it's just not working. And you're like, okay, well, I'll try to fix it. And she would say, Michael, sometimes you just need to know when to kill your babies. 
meaning time to start over. You're not going to sit, you're not painting your way out of this. And it just coming out of this sweet, sweet uh, woman's mouth always just seems so funny and so crazy to me. So it stuck with me. And there is, you know, we don't, you know, we play up giving up or, you know, stopping a thing as such a weakness, but man, sometimes you're just going to spend so much more time trying to fix it. And like I said, if you can just learn from it, just, okay, why didn't that work? Why was that a big waste of time? Oh, I didn't design it enough. Oh, I didn't, you know, color plan, do it, have a good color plan. Oh, you know, all these things. Um, then they can be worthwhile still, even though it's not a finished painting. I'm already beginning to like the feel of that sky much more. I'm basically just kind of simplifying it almost. Holding the brush like a conductor. I'm not over mixing my colors. I'm, I'm kind of letting them play. I'm still leaving it nice and graphic, but I've got this, <clears throat> I've got this uh, texture from the painting before. It's nice and dry and kind of scratchy, and it's just grabbing the paint right off my brush beautifully. So I'm barely having to touch the canvas. Um, there's even little probably can't see it on the screen, but there's little flicks of the colors from the other painting, you know, the ghosts of paintings past showing through a little bit and that's all right. I don't mind it. I think it will maybe give it a nice little touch of sparkle. Painting right up to the edge, but you know, leaving a little space. I'll be able to go in and refine my edges a little more later. So, <clears throat> are you going to go back into your darks after doing your lights? In the sky, I will, yeah. I mean, I'm doing my lights in the sky to create my warm and my kind of my feel of the day. And then, yeah, I will definitely be painting over every inch of this painting, hopefully very quickly. You can see how much I've covered in just five, 10 minutes. Um, it's, it's nice. I've got a lot of the decisions. I went ahead and sat back and kind of analyzed it and said, you know, this is working. This is not um, working as much. Um, let's... Let's, uh, so a lot of my, well, I don't want to say a lot because I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it, um, but uh, there's a lot of decisions that I've kind of made. Oh, look at that beautiful, that's one brush stroke. Pink, white, yellow. I don't know if it'll get to stay, but it's sure, uh, there it is again. Because I have all these light colors still. I haven't even cleaned my brush yet. I'm just loading it up and I'm just letting the paint that's on the top kind of skim across. And you guys hear my cat? It's probably trying to figure out what's so exciting in here. Michael, when you began this last time, was it with the intention of coming back and uh, covering it up? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, that, that sounds awful, but I don't mean it. Like you didn't really, I mean, paint it last week thinking that way, did you? No, I rarely do. I, I don't, I mean, I'll do my underpaintings with that concept, but no, I was kind of attacking it. And uh, I don't remember even why, what we got talking about or how I ran out of time. Um, but uh, no, but 
I'm glad I did. And I, I don't consider myself an all a prima painter too often. Um, you know what I mean? I'm always willing to revisit. Oh, sorry, elbowing the camera. Um, unfortunately, these beautiful brush strokes aren't probably going to really work. Um, but uh, maybe I can try to remember it a little bit and bring some of it in. Um, no, I'm just. Uh, No, I didn't have that in mind last week. Um, but I think it's going to work nicely to uh, show kind of some of the thought process and ways of working and uh, building up a post, you know, post different ways we can build up a painting. See how much the brush is moving. I'm just spinning it around, letting it pick up areas and uh, got so much nice paint on there. I can almost just use it to carve with. Love that. So unfortunately, during the break, I uh, experimented with connecting the high definition recording, and it will not let me do Zoom and that recording at the same time. So um, I will have to figure out an alternative. Um, I don't think I want the edge of my clouds that bright, but I could experiment with it. Maybe let's, let's see what happens if I kind of make a very vibrant, warm pink and bring that kind of on the edge of some of these clouds that are up here. Is that a dinging noise? Do you guys hear a dinging noise? Is it coming from one of your guys' cameras? I do hear it. I'm hoping that doesn't mean that the freezer is open downstairs. I may have to run down and check on that. My wife just, uh, she may have just grabbed some ice cubes for her drink as she ran, ran out. Your freezer tells you when it's left open? Yeah, thank goodness. When you got a teenager, it's very useful. Mm -hmm. I get distracted midway through making a drink, midway through pulling out ice cream. So I heard it again. Is it coming from anybody there? I see um, a couple of people have mics open. I can hear it, but it's not from here. All right. Finish this covering the sky a little more. I don't know if that's, that's nice. Really trying to make yeah, the clouds appear to be overlapping each other slightly. I'm having so much fun right now, just splashing big colors on. If I mean, I could easily decide this is pretty distracting to me. So um, you know what? Let's just knock it away. I, I like the idea kind of of another cloud kind of over these other clouds, but it's not doing so I'm just oops, too dark. I want it here. I guess what I should do is take my handy dandy palette knife. Otherwise, I'm going to be fighting that white that's on there the whole time. That's already kind of better. It just makes it settle down. Come back in with my darks and give it some of the shape that I liked. 
still hearing it. I don't know. Is there a printer? No, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily sound like the freezer, but that's the thing that would be worrisome that I'd want to take care of. I gotta be careful. I got these three lines now, right? Um, I like this one. I don't like what I got here still. I'm just gonna obliterate it mostly. I'm very, uh, aggressive in my language today, aren't I? Warrior, or weapons, or alliteration. So, Michael, I know sometimes you, you will lightly brush things to make it look more wispy, but in this case, you are going more impressionistic style? So far, and I can still do, um, let's zoom in. I've got some really nice So the edges, I'm still like in here, I'm still getting, I can just take in, I can leave it crisp on the front, on the side that's facing the light, just barely dip my brush in and drag it and give it these great little marks if I want. Let's do the inverse with the shadow, bring it over here and I can just kind of drag that in giving hopefully some shape. So once you've loaded, you know, you got paint on there. It is, it's almost like having nice wet clay that I can very malleable. I can just kind of move it around and uh, isn't that fun? So just remember the conductor or the magician who can very much just changing our pressure, our, how we're holding the brush and uh, let that do. So I've squeezed, I'm gonna zoom back out. Um, I've, I've pushed these piles so that they're very thin and it's hard to load much paint, right? And I'm doing kind of a thicker painting process today. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick those piles back up. Now I've got a nice little dab, pick these piles up. Nice little dab. You know, it's not a whole lot of paint. I thought I, I thought I mixed a lot of paint. This happened last week as well. Um, and it also gives me a mixing surface back. Michael, our view of the canvas is, is a little bit um, not centered, of course. And so what is that lower right uh, shadow part? Uh, in the reference, it's a, like a line of rocks. I'll probably turn it more into like a beach or something. I don't know. I, kinda, I guess that's something I should think about, but um, we'll make it into grass, make it easy. Maybe at the end, you can point the camera directly at the painting. Sure, and I can try to change my angle a little no, bit. No, I mean, no, we, we like being able to see you mix and not see your back. So I'm just saying maybe at the end. Sure.
kind of see what happens if I bring a little bit of the blue over here. I'm kind of thinking it may get too punchy. Yeah, it's a little, um, makes it kind of spotty. So let's just get that back to the darks. Also, this blue above the tree just doesn't fit, doesn't work. I'm just gonna get it warmer again. And I don't actually think I even like this cloud shooting right into that corner, so. Let's bring some of that cloud across. You can see, hopefully, with very light pressure, I'm able to just paint right over the tops of things. And I don't know anything. Maybe that's just too much going on up here. That's just it's going. pretty busy with the tree. Yeah, and it's right in the corner, so that's not where I want it. So I'm just going to drag that and just kind of create some soft, soft edges are telling the viewer, not much here to look at. Let's go back down to something cool and interesting. So I'm just going to soften that. Something, something, something like that. And is that a certain location from the reference photo? Uh, I'm sure it is, but I stole or whatever, took this from one of those free reference sites. It reminds me of like maybe Utah. Yeah, it also looks like a lot of Saudi Island. But yeah, I, I really have no idea. And unfortunately, I didn't even if I don't know if the site even tells you who took the photo, but I would have liked to have, you know, said based on the photo by um, if it looked anything, if it ends up looking anything like the photo, just to give and predisposing that it actually turns into something nice that the uh, photographer might want his name attached to. Um, so I can let some of that blue show through that was there, that kind of gray purple um, from the last time I was painting and create a little bit of a feeling of uh, maybe some ripples. Maybe, maybe. All right, got the sky, we got the water. I might come back and revisit it, but we want to get into the rest of the painting. Um, very quickly, I'm just going to come in and knock in some darks over here. Shadow family with kind of a rim light, a little bit of light passing through here. So mix a nice dark, I'm going to take a big dab of French ultra or the ultramarine, some of my quinacridone, and just a touch of yellow. I'm gonna let it be nice and cool down at the base where it's meeting the water. No light is getting through that. It's just, oh, what did I just rub white? Um, So this is hopefully going to get very dark down here. Bam. That dark is going to kind of travel up a little bit, but 
doesn't last very long. There's quite a bit of light getting through the leaves and the shrubs and everything else. And that's going to be my darkest dark, I think, is going to be there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lighten that up. I can use some of that nice little blue gray that we made earlier. I'm going to keep it kind of in the cool family for a little bit, getting towards green a little bit. There's a little bit of reflected light bouncing around in there. It's kind of a blue gray green that I got going on. A little bit up here into the denser parts of the canopy where light is just not really getting through. All right, I'm going to go ahead and lighten up. Oh, I probably want to bring some of that in my reflection. Lighten that up a little bit. Going towards kind of a green, yellowy green gray. And this is still areas that aren't getting any strong light, but they're just beginning to get a little more light that, and they're still in the shadow family, still nice and quite dark. I was thinking Monet, right? All the colors that Monet was throwing on top, letting them dance around together. You know, he's got a plan, he's got a structure, and then he really gets crazy with the color, doesn't he? Sometimes. Don't tell him I said that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and warm that gray green up. Let's bring in my warmer yellow, my Indian yellow. That always needs a little white because it's so transparent. And let's get some of the foliage. I'm wanting to keep things kind of a mo little more simplified. Squinting my eyes when I look at the reference of how can I, how can I make these complicated tree shapes, a little more simplistic, meaning take away some of the detail. <laughs> Bring a little bit of that kind of into here, maybe a dash of it, a little darker, a little cooler down along the uh, creek or the bank. Yeah, definitely a more impressionistic feeling. Um, a lot of times um, artists will do when you've got a strong uh, shadow family and a strong uh, light family, in your painting, a lot of artists will actually just have two different brushes too, a shadow brush and a light brush. And that will help you keep their differentiation that much clearer. I'm gonna go, what? <laughs> Can you hear the cat? I, we do. He's so talkative. It's such a strange, annoying cat, but we love him. His name is Rambutan. So I'm mixing up um, some yellow to kind of give me some rim light. And you can see I started here, and that's crazy. That just is far, far, far too bright, far too light, far too warm, um, all of it. So I'll mix beside it so you can kind of see my thought process. I mixed some quinacridone red, turned it to an orange. I think some of that might work along the periphery a little bit where the 
tree is in fact getting more light, but I still think I can get quite a bit darker and uh, stronger chroma, stronger color than that. Um, and now I will neutralize that, keeping it on the warm side. So this is the, the leaves that are kind of picking up some of the light that's bouncing around, sneaking through, but it's not really, really strong direct light. Um, but I'm beginning to get into that light family. Um, so again, this afternoon, I will be doing a free demo um, for Cole Gallery and just kind of promoting upcoming classes and workshops. It's one hour long. If anybody is interested in that, let me know and I can post the... Uh, Zoom link. It'll be at three o'clock today. Um, I think there's 72 people signed up for it, but uh, you know, more the merrier. I think I can have 100. Um, the first one we did was 20. That filled up. Then we did it with 50. That filled up. We opened that up to 60. So it's kind of been fun. I'm uh, glad yeah. people are uh, enjoying them. And I, I tried to join. They wouldn't let me enter. So this is Kathleen. I would love to have a, a link to that. I'll get you in with my backstage VIP pass. How about that? Will there be a recording? Yes, I hope. And how, how long is it going to be? Hopefully one hour. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Michael. This is Denise. I would like to see that. OK, what I will do then, thank you, all of you, for your interest. Um, and the rest of you uh, really showed your true colors there. Um, just kidding. Um, I will share it onto the Facebook group uh, page. Um, and so just go and click on there at a pro. Or you know what? I'll just email it to all of you. That'll be even easier. I'll just email it to everybody uh, soon. And you'll also let us know uh, when when the recording's up, and because those that, that didn't say yes, send it to me. Have a you know a different. I'm on a different time frame in Texas. Okay, we're almost looking at two o'clock, y'all. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's. Uh, yep. No, I get it. Let's punch some holes in there with a little bit of light. It's not going to be as mm -hmm. bright as out here because. There's not as much light getting through, but I can still nice carved out shapes. This is sure a big bulky brush to be trying to do any kind of detail work, but you know, kind of feeds into my theme of this being a, a, a kind of a more impressionistic, doesn't it? See, that's too light up there because it's got to kind of be what's beside it. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw out a little bit of a, kind of neutralize that a little bit. All right, I'm not too uh, unhappy with how that looks right now. Um, got some more, we got a little bit of a crazy branch sticking out over here. I don't know, a little bit of a straight line there. I'll be able to come through and refine it, but since we have three minutes left, I'm just gonna keep painting mad dash, mad dash, mad dash. Let's, uh, let's look into these shadows real fast. So now I've kind of know what my cooler portion of the sky is. I can look into that and I could even incorporate some of that. I can take some of that dark that I put in the sky, maybe make it a little darker because I want my ground to be probably darker even in the far away perspective than you know my sky so it kind of darkened that and i like kind of some of those purples that i have there in the shadow so i'm gonna use some of that i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of speckle this onto there um it's almost too dark it's, no too light because I have those values established, I kind of have something to test it against. So that's kind of fun. Um, getting really spotty, but now uh, my transition colors, 
as I kind of do that. Remember the, uh, I can have a kind of a band of warmer color. Kind of help, hopefully push that back a little bit, having some kind of bluer color back there. A little bit, so I'm gonna do kind of a purple transition color as we get towards the warmer side. Um, as it goes towards the reds and oranges. So I'm just kind of skimming along the edge of those shadows and then I'm creating a little bit, hopefully, of a transition color. Probably warm it up as I get a little closer to me. Gotta remember my shadows or reflections. All right, let's think as I come across what changing my brush to my clean span, uh, uh, light shine family brush. I'm gonna get some nice warms, kind of some of these colors that I had in the tree over on the left in the warm area. And let's see what I can do here. Really letting that warm yellowy light just kind of blast across and hit the tops of those trees and it kind of comes down over some of them. Um, get it a little more orange as it gets kind of away from the light source, it won't be quite as enveloped in the atmosphere and everything else that's going on there. Are you guys able to see that okay? Yes. Adding in my yellows. Let it get a little redder, a little oranger as I begin to uh, pull away from this ever uh, really strong, dense light source and see how that reads. Kind of mixing it in with the shadow color. So now it's kind of a combination of my, um, some of that tech color from my light, but I'm darkening it and bringing it into the shadow family now. So I'll have little glimpses of where areas are not completely stuck in the shadow. Right, there's just so much I can do going on in the shadow. I could really go crazy and you know try to tell you everything, but I think just little hints. But isn't that nice? See how that fits right in there to the shadow? I mean, I don't know if it's nice or not, but the idea of it that it sits and goes into the shadow, uh, but it still relates to everything else. So the shadow family and the light family are still separate by value and by temperature because it's much cooler, but they're relating. I know you're almost out of time, Michael, but maybe in the notes you could put how you know when to put warm darks and when to put cool darks in the shadows. 
Sure. Let's just talk about it really quick. So, you know, it's where's the light source? You know, what's reflecting into it? Um, also, kind of what's the mother color of the thing? You know, if it's red flowers in the shadows, they're still going to be red flowers, but they're much cooler than if they had been hit by the light. We saw that in Monet's path that we looked at. That's horrible what I just put in there. Um, and uh, um, so you got the mother color or the innate color of the object plus the light. And in this, in a lot of the cases of shadows, it's not direct light at all. It's uh, the light that's kind of bouncing or kind of enveloping from another area. So even though my light is really strong here, the sky is still reflecting light, right? Like, otherwise, if in real life, we'd be walking around and wherever the sun wasn't shining, it'd be pitch black. And that's just not the case because of all the atmosphere in our sky that's reflecting the light back down and into the shadows all the time. Okay, knock in, knock in. You know what, maybe I can just about finish this. You know, if you have to go, I completely get it. Um, but remember, you don't need to do dishes or laundry today. I excuse you from that completely. If you need a signed note for your spouse or roommate, let me know. Just have a generic one in our in one of the albums that we can pull whenever we need. Right, yes. Michelle has been excused from regular life. She will be back with you once she's had her fill of painting and looking at art online and learning from it. Something like that. Perfect. With you know, you can fill in your name. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I always have myself on mute, but I'm laughing so hard on the other side of the screen. <laughs> like my kids are walking in and out, just like, what are you doing in there? Anyway, very entertaining. Are you taking uh, emails or numbers on that form, Michael? That form, yeah, yeah, definitely. Just let me know. I, you know, I'll try to make it as official as possible. Just make a script pad or something and. All right, so now we're kind of into the light here. That's gonna be the most important part. And I keep wanting to go between the shadows and the color and the light with the same brush, but I just remembered in the nick of time. Michael, I'm not sure we can see that far right part. Fair enough, thank you much for letting me know. I can also zoom back out. Okay. Isn't that cool? All of a sudden, just by creating some color shifts within my shadows, all of a sudden, 
things begin a little bit to feel like they're turning ever so slightly, like the tree is not just a flat dark and a flat light, but it creates that illusion of having form. It's been funny, interesting. I've been um, studying uh, flow and the idea of working in flow because every once in a while when I'm painting, I really, I just lose everything. I just become one with the painting and it's magic when it happens. And how do I do that more often? But, but in learning that and studying it, I started, I uh, kind of went down the rabbit hole of neurochemicals. Um, dopamine, oxycontin, oxycontin, oxytocin, and endorphins, and different things. And really, uh, in the study of that, or in reading about that, learning that dopamine is released when, uh, the, when your body is about to uh, experiment, or is experimenting, or trying something new, or pu pushing beyond your boundaries. And I think I'm addicted to dopamine. I just... I constantly wanting to push. And the crazy thing is, is for people who, you know, like to experiment, like to try new things, uh, like all of you guys, otherwise you wouldn't even be in my class, right? If you were just wanting to do the same that you've been doing, is uh, when we experience dopamine, and I can't remember the other chemical, there's one more of the five neurochemicals, um, are in conjunction when we're being creative and when we're uh, pushing our boundaries. And when we release it, our actually our mind, our brain goes into a sort of a, um, the ability to retain information a little bit in a different, deeper, almost subconscious way. And because that's what we're doing. We're testing, we're trying, we're seeing what's working, what's not. And so, when you are having fun, this is my hypothesis, since I just, since you guys reminded me of the word, since we're scientists, um, when you uh, have that dopamine rush, um, you are able to lock things in a little bit better than without it. And uh, also what it does is your body remembers. When I did this, I got excited. It was thrilling and it was fun. And I had this great little, you know, uh, neurochemical high or rush or whatever it is, you know, that excitement, that just little bit of a feeling. And it, uh, it wants it again. So it, that's why it's locking it into your memory is we're all just animals trying to uh, figure out the best way, the easiest way, the most fun way of doing things. And, um, and the other cool thing is if we're successful enough or feel um, that our painting was either a success or that our painting session was a success, we got what we wanted out of it. We also release other types of neurochemicals. Um, and those neurochemicals are the same ones, like I guess would be like an oxycontin, oxytocin is released. And we get a feeling of community, which is weird. It's kind of the same feeling you get when you're with loved ones. It's also the same feeling when you sit back and job well done, like a hard day's labor when you sit back and yeah, I did that. That's nice. So it's kind of cool. It's interesting. You know, I don't mean to sound like, a, you know, I'm chasing the high or anything like that, but I thought it was really interesting trying to figure out, you know, how can I paint for hours every day? What is it that, you know, gets me excited about it beyond just the pursuit of trying to become the best painter I can. Um, and it's neurochemical, it's, it's brain psychology is at play. And uh, I just thought that was pretty neat. And next time I tell you about it, I'll be able to say it in a more succinct way, I hope. What's the opposite of dopamine? Uh, I would have to, I, I wish we had more class time. Um, I actually have a full page of notes. Oh. Um, There's a lot of times when I paint, everything's going along fine. And then I put something on with a brush and I go, oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I just 
I just broke my painting. It's like anything, any high has a low. Yeah. Right? I mean, so, you know, and especially when it comes crashing all of a sudden, you're like, I'm kicking ass, I'm kicking ass. Oh, no, I just got my ass kicked. <laughs> um, sorry, the kids that are in the room. Um, but you, you know what I mean? Like, it's like when you're doing sports or when you're playing a board game or whatever else and you're, you know, doing great and all of a sudden the rug gets pulled from out from underneath you. Um, and th that does happen in painting, right? Um, so I imagine it's just all of a sudden that <laughs> like dopamine rushing away from you versus into you. Um, I, I really don't know, but that is an interesting. And I imagine people that are fear averse, uh, risk averse, sorry, um, maybe hate that feeling more. Well, I, know that I, I often get to a point when I'm painting where I think this is nowhere near done, but I know if I go any further, I'm going to screw it up. Sure. Yeah. So absolutely. I have a lot of unfinished paintings. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I, I do too. Um, yeah. Both the paintings I was working on yesterday uh, got sat down for that very reason. And I, I, I have learned that, you know what? if I don't get back to it, that is kind of like an editor in my brain saying, you know what, it wasn't as that idea or that design or whatever it was, wasn't as awesome as you thought, because I think everything that pops into my head is awesome for a little bit. And I'm like, I got to get this down. And then it's kind of in that, you know, editing later of the brain of the idea, where you're just kind of like, eh, you know what, maybe a piece of that was something, but nobody's going to want to buy your painting of whatever that was or you know you don't want to spend all that time on that you've got things that'll be more fun to spend time on um so I just pretend now that it's an editing thing and I also there's a lot of days um not recently but a lot of days when I walk into the studio and I don't know exactly what I'm going to paint I just know that I'm going to paint I paint every day right um I know that I'm going to paint so I'll literally walk in and have you know all those paintings basically screaming at me, pick me, pick me, pick me. And, uh, you know, I'm just like, oh, you know what? I feel like I want to play with you today. Um, mm. Whatever that is. So going back is fine. And a lot of times when we don't have the answer, again, I think it probably has to do with the neurochemicals and everything, is our brain locks it away, that idea. And it's kind of slowly working on it you know that idea of ask yourself a question before you go to bed and maybe the answer will come kind of thing it's i think there is some of that to painting too and a lot of it will happen when i'm looking at other people's paintings and that's part of being on that river with them is you know they've not no problem that i'm facing in painting wasn't faced before by somebody smarter better you know than me mm -hmm. so i might find the answer in looking at other people's artwork later like oh yeah if i just cool that area and soften the edges or you know whatever else um yeah all i'm going to do now is just uh bring in some grasses here um i'll, I'll bring in i'm going to let some of those darks be even darker than the dark over here i know i said that was my darkest dark um and or maybe I won't, maybe I, no, I'm going, I'm keeping it as stones. Because I can do that now, whereas if I did grasses, I'd have to superimpose over the really thick, wet water that I've got going on there. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do one line of light raking across these rocks, simply because it's in my reference and I think it looks cool. So the light's kind of hitting on the fronts of this rock over here and this rock here and the front of this rock here. And Little more light also streaming across over back here. Yep, 
getting a little lazy. I'm used to using the same color everywhere. So that's kind of dumb, kind of going against the whole purpose of this painting. Um, let's bring in some cool shadow colors. Let's down to these rocks. Thanks for sticking with me. I really shouldn't be sticking with you guys because I got a meeting in here in just a little bit. Got to prep for other stuff, but. But you're in the flow. I can't quit you guys. I think that's a movie line from something. I can't quit you. Um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm in the flow. I'm, I'm really getting high on my own supply. I'm really got the dopamine's flowing. I'm having a blast. And, you know, there's times it's not like the dopamine is a wonder drug or, you know, this excitement is a wonder thing. Because there's times when you step back and you're like, oh my gosh, that was, what was I even thinking? Why didn't somebody come in and knock the brush out of my hand? Um, yeah, it's funny when you get a group of artists together. I, I have a group that we go and paint out at the coast for a week. And, you know, we talk about that. The, the, and I hate to keep using drug terms here, but literally we call it getting high on beauty. And I'm sure you guys have had it too, where you're at a place or the lighting is just something's happening. And all of a sudden you're just running around like a mad person, just taking a thousand photos. Oh, that, oh my God, look at that. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, you know, this will never happen again. Um, and you get, I, yeah, we call it getting high on beauty. And uh, um, then you go back and you look at the photos, you're like, what was going on? Like some of these are pretty cool, but you know, most of it's kind of nothing. Um, getting some darker darks into kind of the shadows, getting myself a little more rock structure. Not positive. I love my rocks, but uh, but maybe. You know, microdosing on beauty is legal in Oregon now. What's that? Microdosing on beauty is now legal in Oregon. Oh, perfect. That's all I need. <laughs> yep. I, I mean, yeah, that is interesting. I wonder if how many artists will be affected by that. Like, you know what I mean? Experimenting with that I can't imagine trying to create artwork. At the same time. So this became too what it is too light. It's not warm. It's just light. So that does not feel like the same warm light that's hitting everything else. So um, that needs to go. It's in the light pan. I could have let it dry and then go back in and warm it up. Also, you were starting to do what I always find myself doing, which is like putting a whole lot of detail in the corner of the canvas. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> The best part of the canvas is the bottom right corner, right where I want to put my signature. <laughs> exactly. Lots of stuff there, lots of texture, so I can't but, even use them. But from from all the paintings we looked at today, when you showed the uh, slideshow, I mean, it, it just makes me realize, you know, you can just take all that detail, darken it down, and it and it won't be distracting. It'll still be there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this whole pass, I mean, I don't even, it wouldn't even be necessary if I had to just drag my. Uh, oh, yeah, you could have just kept your shoreline going. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. I'll go and look at it um, after class. And what I may do is just drag my, maybe let's just try that. Let's just pull all that paint off yeah. and just put. See, I, I swear it takes a village. You guys there to remind me to push the cord and you know, you're there to remind me that I'm overdoing a worthless corner. 
So I just need a little more sky. Have no fear, Michael. Have no fear. Wow. Just a few strokes of the brush and then you've changed it entirely. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I can't spend much time on this. Now let's take another brush. And now it looks like a rough river hitting up against the rocks. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's uh, bring that reflection down. Darker. Wow. So my painting for this week is a canal, which does pretty much what you're doing. So that was why when, when you took that corner, corner out, it sort of has the shape of my work for this week. Just, just saying, I'm appreciating it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we're all here learning from each other, um, learn from my mistakes. And I do that all the time. I bring these just grasses into the foreground, thinking that it'll, you know, add depth and perspective. In fact, a huge painting I'm working on now, I, I keep insisting that I have these stupid grasses in the foreground. I don't know what they're helping. And um, yeah, they're, they're really going to be a pain in the butt. Um, but what I need to do is slow down and actually design those grasses if I'm going to make them be in there. I'm, so far, they've just been kind of scribbled in. So they may have hope. You've that. talked in the past about, um, you know, having not having the painting sort of run off the edge so that you go look at the painting next to it. Yeah, you don't want to have an arrow pointing right out of it for sure, if you can't avoid it. Um, all right, let's do one quick thing. Just clean this brush up a little bit. And I'm just going to feather these reflections down just a touch. I'm going to do uh, one stroke or two strokes down on each one, just really lightly, barely touching. And then I'm going to pull across. Okay, so bear with me. This is always scary. And this is a clean dry brush. It was. It appears to have quite a bit of weird light blue on it. So just reach into the drawer here. I'm having a hard time knowing what brushes are clean. It's gotten to that part of the painting. Um, drag down, drag down. Ooh. And now I'm just going to drag across. Wow. And this one will go ahead and load up a little bit of paint color. So these two lines appear to be pretty close. So I'm just going to make this one bigger. And let's drag one into the dark side. Lightly, lightly, lightly. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Not bad. I went much longer. Thank goodness we didn't do the uh, gray weirdo exercises. <laughs> Try to even that out. And I'm just going to move it up and leave it there as we uh, say our adieus and wish each other success in life for the next week. Um, I will send out the link for that um, right as soon as I uh, shut down the class. Um, your grades are fully dependent on your showing. And no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, 
I had a great time. That was so very much. Every one of these classes is always too much. And I still don't think we're going to cover it all in our seven weeks, eight weeks, however long it is together. And that's just the way of painting. Um, I, I make these big, long lesson plans and think out all this stuff. And I always get to two of the 20 items I want to talk about. Um, but that's just it. It's all too exciting. It's all too fun. And you guys ask such good questions that, you know, we end up going down these beautiful rabbit holes together. And I appreciate that. And um, I can't wait to see your paintings. Sorry, we didn't have time to talk about your paintings. Please, 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 please help each other. Give each other feedback on the Facebook page, critique each other, what, not make, critique, I hate that word, but just give each other feedback and learn from each other. Um, and uh, it's such a great resource. You guys are all such great resources for each other. And um, yeah, there we go. So the assignment, finish this painting. For those of you who uh, you know, never do the dishes again, um, your assignment is also to do the grayscale thing. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you guys look at any of any other artists and see great references or examples, feel free to share them. We can share other people's work as well. All right. Um, I had a whole plan for now. Oh, next week. So this is all vibrant. Lots and lots of color. Thinking Monet. Next week, Deb, we're going back to a little more tonalist. We're going to work with a very strange and limited palette. We're for those of you who want to do a little head research, it's kind of, it's called the Zorn palette. And awesome. we're going to be using, um, well, we can all, we'll have, anyways, we're going to be using uh, different colors to create the illusion of color. And it will blow your mind. It's so cool. And it's just beautiful. And it's a wonderful way to create harmony. And it's led me, just the idea of this has led me down so many of my favorite paintings. And I will talk about that next week. Um, Which red did you say that, I mean, vermilion, right? But but we don't have vermilion, right? So. Right, yeah. I mean, a lot of artists will use, we'll talk about it. I'm, that red? I'm not going to hold you to a Zorn palette. We're just going to use the idea of a Zorn palette as a jumping off point because I want you to feel free to use the colors that you have. But a cad red is what I typically will use. Okay. A cadmium red, a black of some sort. And that recently it's been Payne's Gray because I love, love, love Payne's Gray. Um, and then a yellow ochre. But again, I love my um, Indian yellow. So I've gone down a lot of paths. I've also swapped out my red for a brown. So I don't even have a red or a blue. I've just got yellow, brown, and black. And you will just, again, it's going to blow your mind that all of a sudden your eye will just start reading it as, look at all that red. Look at all that blue the brain fills in this information for us. And I will have people like, stop lying, stop lying, stop lying. <laughs> There's blue in this painting. I'm like, nope, no blue. You know, it's like, what about this part? What about this part? And our eye is just filtering it and changing it in our brain to see a color that's not even there. So cool. Michael, you said finish this painting. Do you want us to use the same reference? No, 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 sorry. Um, I just want you to come over here and finish my painting. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the one we started this week? Yes, please. Yeah, please. Just whatever it is you were working on. If you finished it, do another um, or work on that uh, grayscale exercise. I'd be curious to see what you guys do and think you're my um, first time I've ever. I literally came up with that idea <laughs> this morning. Um, so I was mad dash painting those are making the piece of paper. Um, but I think it could be really cool. And again, I think it's a great tool to have maybe beside your painting so that you can test your values. If you know what your values are on the painting that you're trying to finish, you could put those same values on a piece of paper um, to the right or left, depending, and just test and see, is this close to that same value? And again, it's so hard to see. Even when you put the color on top of the gray, it won't read right because of temperature and all these things. And remember that the grays are, or the blacks are always um, kind of bluish. So it's not an easy exercise. It's fraught with um, innate uh, problems, but I think you'll still learn a lot. Anything else, guys? No. Nope. Nope. Thank you, Michael. You guys are fantastic. Hopefully I'll see a couple of you this afternoon. And if not, I'll see you soon. Thank you guys for all your time. Okay, okay. thank you, Michael.
Bye, everybody. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, Denise.